Good morning, everybody. I hope you all have had a fabulous week. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jackie, and I have the absolute pleasure of getting to tell the kids' story here at Agape every Sunday. Um, and I know I say the same thing every time, but just in case there's new people, I always like to introduce myself. Um, so, this week we are going to be talking about Cain and Abel. Um, and this story is going to take place in Genesis chapter 4. Right? So, at the beginning of the Bible, we all know the story of creation, right? And God took seven days to create everything that we know and see. And then Adam and Eve showed up, right? And Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the tree, and the serpent tricked them, and they're kicked out of the garden, right? But what happens after that? That is what we are going to be talking about today. So, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys. So, like I said... Uh, we are looking at Genesis chapter 4 today, um, and it is the story of Cain and Abel. Now, our story picks up after Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Um, and so, our story starts off with Eve getting pregnant. And Eve had a son, and they named him Cain. And short time later, she became pregnant again with another son, and they named him Abel. Now, Abel was in charge of the flocks, in charge of the animals, the livestock, keeping track of all of the sheep and cattle and everything that was going on with the animals. And Cain was in charge of the fields and the soil and making sure that their crops were growing and doing the things that they needed to do. And so, because of this, each of them, still worshiping God, had to give an offering, right? Everybody in the family gave an offering that was just customary to the time period. And so, Cain, being the in charge of the crops and the soil, um, gave an offering of agriculture. And Abel gave an offering of uh, young, baby, blameless sheep, right? That was just how sacrifices and offerings worked at that point in time. And um, because Abel's um, sacrifice of the lamb was looked at as a more thoughtful and well thought out offering that was looked at in favor or in God's favor where Cain's offering wasn't looked at um, in the highest favor of God. And because of this, uh, God took favor on Cain or Abel, I'm sorry, God took favor on Abel because of his um, sacrifice of a lamb and God looked kind of disappointed at um, Cain. And because of this, Cain became very upset and was angry and agitated. And God looked at him and said, why are you upset? If you continue to do the right thing and, you know, do what you're called to do, there's no reason for me to not show you favor. But if you don't and try to make shortcuts, you'll lose my favor. And this really upset Cain, actually. This wasn't something that he wanted to hear. Now, if you remember back to a couple of weeks ago when we talked about Joseph and his brothers, and they were upset, so they came up with a plot to kill him, to kill Joseph. Uh, there's a similar situation in our story this week, which is not a good solution to solving arguments with your siblings. Use your words, not violence, right? It's an important, important side note. But because Cain was so upset with Abel and so upset with how Abel had favor in God, he decided to take um, a bone, uh, I believe it was a donkey jaw or a lamb's jaw, a jaw bone of some kind, and killed his brother, right? And of course, God knew that this had happened because God knows everything. God can see everything. But he asked Cain, he said, where is your brother? And Cain responded, I don't know. I'm not my brother's keeper. I don't need to keep tabs on him. That's your job, right? And so God gave him that chance to repent and to take ownership of what he had done, but he decided not to. So what happens next is God calls him out. He says, I can hear your brother's blood calling to me from the ground, right? I can hear the woe in his soul, right? Because he's dead and he doesn't have a voice anymore. And because of this action, God decided to punish Cain. And the punishment was kind of a big deal. So the punishment that God has for 
uh, Cain is that um, he will no longer be able to reap from the land. So what does that mean? That means that he's not going to be able to sow crops um, that he's grown. It's just not going to work for him, right? All of the crops are going to die. There's not going to be anything enough to eat. And it's going to be that way for forever. And Cain actually tries to bargain with God. He says, God, your punishment is too heavy, too much. Um, anyone who sees me wandering will try to kill me, right? And this is where God kind of has us back a little bit. He says, anyone who tries to kill you will receive the same punishment seven times over. So they'll receive it and their kids will receive it and their kids' kids will receive it and their kids' kids will receive it all the way down the line for seven generations right and in order for people to know that Cain is Cain God marks him and he has a special mark um, that only Cain has and so that's kind of where our story of Cain and Abel leaves off and eventually Cain and his wife decide to move away from the rest of um, their family so Adam and Eve and all of that family they move away because they're wanderers now for the rest of their life. That was part of the punishment that God set aside for them. The other thing that happens in this story is we get a little bit of a family tree, right? Um, and after we go through the family tree of Cain and his wife and their son and their son's sons and their son's sons and the whole line of people, um, we see God um, taking care of Adam and Eve, right? God likes to take care of his um take care of us um, even when we mess up right like Adam and Eve did and so um, he actually blesses Adam and Eve with another baby and they name this baby Seth and um, at that point in time people Adam's and Eve's family started praising God again right and started um, relying on the Lord Jesus so that is all that I have for you today my friends, I hope you all have a fantastic week. Um, and just a reminder, there is no kids night this week. Um, we're going to be taking a break for this summer. Um, however, I am absolutely available to chat and hang out. If anybody wants to, please feel free to reach out and get in touch with me and we can figure out a time to do so. I hope you all have a fantastic week and I will talk to you next Sunday. Bye guys.